The U.S. left Iraq in 2011 after 10 years of war and 4,486 American dead. What was gained has been lost as Iraq is ripped into thirds by the two branches of Islam, the Sunnis and the Shia, and the Kurdish ethnic minority. An extremist Sunni Muslim army called ISIS has seized much of the West and the North. Last week, the Kurdish city of Erbil was threatened. The siege of the Kurds has been relieved somewhat by 19 American airstrikes on ISIS over the last four days. Holly Williams is there. These men are Iraq's best hope for defeating ISIS. They're Kurdish fighters from Iraq's northeast, the only ones on the ground in this region who are still taking on the Islamic militants. Iraqi government soldiers abandoned the country's north two months ago, allowing ISIS to move in and capture their weapons and tanks, many of them paid for by America. The Kurdish fighters are famous for their courage on the battlefield, but today they lost another town, Jalaula, to the Islamic extremists. The front line is just two miles in that direction. This is as close as we can get to the militants' positions. And the soldiers here say they need more American airstrikes to help them defeat ISIS. They also want the U.S. to give them new weapons that are a match for the extremists they're fighting. Thousands of Iraqis are now facing starvation after they fled ISIS for this barren mountaintop. The U.S. and other countries are dropping food and water from the air, but it isn't enough, and more than 50 children have died. At a command post near the front line, Iraq's deputy prime minister, Raoul Shawais, himself Kurdish, told us these men cannot defeat the Islamic militants by themselves. It is necessary that the other Iraqi forces will join this, this battle. But they uh, ran away two months ago. They can come back. What would they it take for them to come back? First of all, a good government. And Holly Williams is joining us from Erbil. Holly, is good government enough to end this conflict? Well, Scott, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, who you just heard, told us that Iraq is in a state of civil war. Now, many people here blame the current Prime Minister, Nouri al-Maliki, for fueling religious tensions and allowing the Islamic militants to capitalise on them. But the problem is that divisions between Shiite Muslims, Sunni Muslims and Kurdish Iraqis are so deep that it's difficult to see how any government could hold Iraq together. Holly Williams in Iraq for us tonight. Thank you, Holly.